Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 17 Hasu League Round of 16 Group D. Again, I do not have all the replays from this set. I'm not sure what happened with the Round of 16 this time. Hopefully, the Round of 8 will be a little bit more fleshed out. But we do have several games from this group at the very least. We got Zazu, I know, in here. We got Jiraiya. We got Radley. I'm not sure if there was withdrawals as well. There might have been some scheduling issues with this last season. Hopefully, that cleans up the... Next season down the line. Anyway, we got Radley starting in the upper left-hand corner as the red Terran bottom right-hand corner. We got Jiraiya starting as the blue Zerg. This is on Retro. Jiraiya, he's a fun guy if you want to see actually some 2v2 play. He plays pretty extensively on shield battery. And I'm not he's not an exclusive 2v2 player, but he's very, very skilled at 2v2. I would say his 2v2 skills certainly surpass his 1v1 skills. Radley, a very solid, I believe, Polish Terran. And we saw both of these guys again, show some pretty strong play in the round of 32. Now, between these two, I don't know who to favor, honestly. Uh, Radley from Team Ash, and you also have Team Ash versus Team Urk, and both of these guys, if you want to check out Ver when he is casting it, or any of the other guys that cast uh, Brood War Clan League, usually I'm going to Ver for that sort of thing. These guys do very, very well in Brood War Clan League and score good points for their respective teams. And again, these are both two guys where I would say, if they play to their top capacity, they are both capable of going all the way to the finals. So, and I'd love to see that. I'd love to see parity uh, across the board with these rounds. I'm, I, we'll see what Jiraiya opens up with. I have this bias towards 2v2 players. Let me try to explain how this bias, he's going to open up with an 11 hatch. I feel because 2v2 players experiment more with 2v2 builds, what ends up happening is I feel like they end up having a lot more variety in their early game uh, build selection. Looks like we're, we are going to see a spawning pool on 11, but we already... I assume this is a drone scout. It is possible he's going to go for a quick third base. But point being, I feel like there ends up being a good amount of variety. Dry has checked the upper right-hand corner, found nothing. This is going to put him in a difficult situation, by the way, because this is another situation where it takes a lot of time to scout out. And it looks like we are going to have a two racks opener rather than racks into expansion. So, heavier marine presence to start. The drone, I believe, will be able to... Well, here's the problem. Is, is the drone's going to be able to get to the upper left-hand corner, but if Radley does a really good job of just planting this marine on the ramp like that, now Jiraiya doesn't have the follow-up information, so he is going to need to dedicate some initial zerglings to get up here to scout things out. But anyway, going back to my previous thought, I feel like 2v2 players end up with... They, I, I feel like they end up potentially biased. Actually, with these two Marines in place, he should have a signal that it is, in fact, two barracks rather than a single barracks. Is he going to salva? No, the drone ends up getting wiped out. So, But should still have the information. Looks like SCV is making its way to the bottom right. We do have that extractor planted fairly rapidly. But this is a very quick third hatchery, and this could really be punished. Depending on how aggressive Rally decides to get, it looks like he is moving out with the initial five Marines, and I don't know that Jiraiya has enough to defend this. And I was going to say that the 2v2 players more often will choose more aggressive openers. This was a very macro-aggressive opener, where they have like more of a variety of openers to work with because of kind of the, the 2v2 stuff in their belt. But again, because of the lack of Overlord Scout and also no Zerglings dedicated, this Overlord, well, it's not even going to be a position to see these Marines. And Jiraiya has, what, four more cute? He is dropping a... A creep colony preventatively right this second but it's still gonna nowhere it's yeah that's not gonna be sufficient i think he's getting the edge of the marines just now the creep colony is just up it's not even gonna be morphed and his lair was morphing at the natural expansion which is disaster all the way around so that something colony very likely gonna take it taken out looks like some additional zergens have been produced drones pulling off the line jariah actually getting good surface area it looks like that something colony does finish but so nice solid defense but that was a, a good... Wow, I gotta actually say, I'm really impressed with that defense overall. There's still four Marines hanging out here. And not a lot of Zergling defense. The 6 o'clock is still very, very exposed. So, Radley still has an opportunity, honestly, to inflict more damage. Another Sunken Colony getting dropped. Natural expansion up. Radley's still in a very, very solid position. And a Zergling gonna try to sneak around and see what's going on behind this. Unfortunately for Jiraiya, that lair has been exposed. He, Radley knows that layer's coming, which is kind of an odd selection to do it in the natural expansion. He's just now trying to get Zergling speed. The 6 o'clock base is active. It looks like some drones are sneaking out. But Radley, now moving in, is going to try to take out that sunken colony with the Marines he's got. 
and able to take it down, the second sunken colony is going to finish. That's going to be plenty to deal with the additional Marines. So Radley honestly donating troops a little bit here. Continuing to, and this is again kind of the strength, but he's in a very firm position. He is going to need to back off. Honestly, I would back off now as it looks like Jiraiya is hanging out a, is a little bit off resources because of all the early game action. Radley a little bit lower on SEV count because he's invested much more heavily into his infrastructure, but is still in a really, really strong position. So more Marines marching their way down. The initial spire has not even been completed. Jiraiya has got 10 Zerglings along the side and has had to worry about consistent breach, but Radley missing an opportunity here at the six o'clock location. Let's see when he detects the Zerglings. The Zerglings are holding position. So Jiraiya actually, so he's building some Zerglings here out of the six o'clock. It wants to go for a swarm on the Marines before medic support is there, and I think he is going to have the opportunity to do so. Radley going again after the Sutton Colony, and this could be disaster for him because now that's going to open up the Zerglings to sweep in and take care of that Marine force easily. Speed is there, and that's going to force a bunker at the natural expansion, but that's also going to expend a lot of the Marines, and that entire advantage double bunker being built in response to this. Still no Spire. Looks like it's a Hydlestin and Lurkers instead from Jiraiya. Like I was saying, 2v2 players oftentimes have the more creative strategies to wield. So we got double bunker. Radley thinks he's in a stronger position than he is. Maybe because he didn't detect that third base. A Firebat in there. That's certainly going to a test of the front by Jiraiya. But Jiraiya is actually ahead in workers. He's not that far behind supply. Dropping a Queen's Nest. And honestly, with this three gas... Might get a jump start into the late game without too much trouble, but Radley does have the four barracks up. He hasn't needed to spend anything on turrets, although he's investing in turrets right this second. Much, much later than uh, usual. Kind of a. He hasn't dropped a commsat station to check on what Jirai is up to. He does have a pocket of medic marines, but doesn't have a massive amount of map control behind this. One problem for Jirai is it's going to be a long time before he has lurkers up. Radley right now playing defensively, expecting an all in. Dry doing a very diligent thing and moving out with the rest of his Zerglings to go ahead and spot the rest of the map. But going for it looks like plus one armor. So a quick plus one armor into Hive to get a jump on the late game. And it's going to try to expend some lurkers in between to just defend and hold all these territories. This plus one weapons, by the way, and range extremely late from Radley because of all of that early game pressure. He applied finally a commsat getting dropped. But I don't know. Well, we'll see if he. there's going to be sufficient. I don't see any lurkers out in the field currently. So Jiraiya playing this very, very aggressively. And it, he might end up paying for it. Supply was looking somewhat close. He's up three. He needs some sort of additional lurker here at his natural and the six o'clock. It looks like he wants to go for a potential run by with the Zerglings that are remaining. All of them getting taken out. But it looks like Radley is not concerned about those two Zerglings in the main. Not sure where he's going with this attack force. Is he a dropship coming? I do not see kind of an odd position. It might just be unfamiliarity with this map. Now maybe trying to detect a third that is out of position. There are, there's, so we got one lurker at the six o'clock. We got two lurkers there and these lurkers coming in and Radley, because he was a little bit delayed and also expended two commsats now is not gonna have an opportunity to breach and Jiraiya has managed to get up to Hive Tech. Plus one armor is about halfway finished. And there's the Defiler Mount at the natural expansion. I'm not sure that this is kind of an interesting play, putting it the natural rather than at the main, maybe to have a little bit more defense against drops. Lurkers holding the ramp currently. This is kind of an awkward location to try to defend because there's multiple entry points. But in the meantime, Radley getting a second factory. So it looks like he's going to go for a mech swap rather than worrying about science vessels, which could be disastrous for him, honestly. Dropping the ar double armory to go into a pseudo mech transition. And with lurkers, I don't think that was the play here, honestly, against the lurkers in Leighton Field, because he's going to have to, first of all, a lot of mech gets heavily negated by Dark Swarm, which... Jiraiya is just on the... You really need a massive amount of siege tanks to just have an incredible amount of splash to press through the Dark Swarm. Now the Starport just now being dropped, but the lack of science vessels... The science vessels could be punishing Jiraiya right this second. 
And relying on commsats instead to try to de detect the lurker fields are really going to put Radley in a challenging spot. So in the meantime, Jirai is up a massive amount of workers. Radley has not made any movements to grab... A well, okay, he's now made movements to grab a third. Maybe he's going to try to play more a defensive mech style out of this, but his economy is not that great in comparison to Jiraiya. Jiraiya sitting on... He's going to be in a position, honestly, once these Defilers are in play, to expand wherever he wants, and it looks like he's already managed to grab an additional base here in the bottom left-hand corner. Two Lurkers holding there, and Radley starting to fall very, very far behind. He's moving another Medic Marine Force, but... We already have three Defilers on the low ground, maybe a little bit of an oversupply of Defilers, depending on what Jiraiya is attempting to do, but he is going to be able to shove back a lot of this with just the Lurker Link that he's got. The Defiler... Okay, is he going to burrow this? He's going to drop the Swarm? Finally able to get the Swarm. I don't know that he was expecting that little pocket of troops there on the ridge. Radley was just trying to <laughs> play absorb uh, Absorption Defense, but in the meantime, we got Adrenal Glands, we got plus one weapons, we got Plague being researched as well. Still zero science vessels and we're at the 11 minute mark because we're seeing this uh, mech transition. And this, the other problem with mech is it takes a long time to ramp things up and that leaves a big spot where you're not producing anything. So now we got some vultures making their way across and Overlord did get picked off. That's at least going to do something for Radley against Darius. Some mines being planted to the south that will inhibit potential Ultralisk movement or other movement across the map, but if Jiraiya is diligent and just sends out a couple Zerglings to absorb those mines, that should be pretty well cleared. Sometimes what this will do is this will cause your opponent to go actually Overlord and drop to just sail above that. We do have another base being built at the 12 o'clock location. Honestly, Radley might want to think about grabbing an additional base on top of this because mech in... Even just building vultures, mech on top of everything else he's going for a third factory is expensive. Mech is both in the upgrades and nearly everything. So we're seeing a late game transition. I think Jiraiya still has the better piece of it, depending on how he decides to to push the transition. The other thing is we do have this Spire in place for Jiraiya. And this is kind of turning into one of those Protoss situations where if he recognizes that his opponent, yeah, he has some Medic Marines midfield, but if these Medic Marines ever end up expended, that's going to leave just vultures and potentially siege tanks out and just a few turrets. So you can end up in a situation where there's a tech switch. So keep that in mind, where there needs to be sufficient anti-air either in Goliaths or uh, continued production of Medic Marines. We'd have a dropship moving up. I assume to load up some vultures. We'll see if some Medic Marines move alongside. That's going to leave this bottom left-hand corner vulnerable. That Nidus Canal, do not believe... I don't think that's going to be in time. So this is potentially going to be a base kill for Radley. And we don't have any defenses being built. And that's definitely going to put him in a solid position. Three base versus three base, even in the midst of a mech transition, puts him in a solid scenario. So, unfortunately, okay, he's opting to engage the Lurkers from the rear. But that's allowing that Ninus Canal to get up. So, Jiraiya has a little bit of time to react. And it looks like a Defiler is going to get through. And now, honestly, if Radley had just ignored those Lurkers, come up and picked off that Ninus Canal, that would have been it. However, now Jiraiya has an opportunity, but Jiraiya not able to mount enough defense forces and not able to exit with his drones either. So gonna end up losing the bottom left-hand portion of this base. He's re-expanded at three o'clock to try to make up for it. But this is a critical fourth gas that he's losing. I, I still put him in a solid position here because he's got a lot of workers to make up for it, but this is definitely putting Radley in a strong position to be able to contend with Jiraiya as it moves into the later stages of the match. So we'll see it. Radley doing a good job of getting aggressive, slowing down Jiraiya. Still no... Okay, he has a science facility to build a science vessel, but I still do not see a science vessel in play. Instead, just dropships. Somehow Jiraiya had the drones, it looks like, remaining, so tried to drop a bunch here. Radley needs to get a move on and actually, yeah, just drop all of this. It looks like some overlords moving up. I think this might be a miss rally or it was trying to threat to try to draw back some of these troops that lurker wow actually okay so we got seven medics and two marines and that's still gonna hold but is that gonna be sufficient against the sunken colony it should be the drone just gonna exit so all sorts of chaos in the meantime we have another drop here at the six o'clock location this time of vultures and where jiraiya was in a solid position Earlier, at earlier stages, now he's starting to fall apart, losing a lot of his holdings. The dropships 
of Radley putting him right back in this match. And Radley all of a sudden ahead economically. Still solid tech position for Jiraiya. I'm not going to say that he's out of this match, but it is starting to look more favorable for Radley overall. And again, this is... Honestly, this is a situation for Jiraiya. Keep in mind... So he's going for an Ultra Sten right now. I would actually would have loved to see it. It's, it's extremely risky, but I would have loved to see the Mutalisk swap to punish a lot of the lack of anti-air here. Just something to keep in mind. We'll see if Jiraiya gets a thought of it. In the meantime, he's produced Queens. And he's upgrading the Broodling to try to deal with the mech. Which is unfortunate because I feel like with the Dark Swarm and position movement that he, he could have had, th there was a window where he could have gotten aggressive and really push a lot of things. In the meantime, Radley going up to the 9 o'clock base, dropping com uh, dropping a command center, some lurkers catching some vultures midfield, and some overlords going to go ahead and wander across the map, try to scout the area. Resaturation for Jiraiya at the 6 o'clock. He's still up 20 supply, which is usually scary for Terran, but that's usually when you're talking about more medic marine compositions and just science vessels needing to irradiate things. Here, with mech, it's a little bit of a different equation. And part of the play, more of the consideration is these sort of things, is how much damage do these mines get? And also, what are the upgrades and what is the sheer volume of siege tanks versus the something like queens? Some zerglings grouping up top right. Trying to track where that queen managed to get. The Zerglings trying to move out and clear some of these mines in forward field. They are running into vultures, and so not quite able to do it. And now we have Medic Marines supported by Siege Tanks moving mid-map. We do have a Science Vessel in place to provide spotting for all this. Keep in mind the Medic Marines, the upgrades have been halted there. So they're not going to be quite as formidable against the late game Zerg army as they would, especially with level 2 Carapaces, they would be otherwise. So it's really up to these Siege Tanks to make up that damage difference, as well as Spider Mines should they land. A Dark Swarm Dry able to send Radley back. Radley, I think, was looking to get a cap position at the natural expansion. Another mine, therefore, the Lurkers headlong diving into that, eating some damage, and that's going to open up. Ooh, splash damage shot a little bit off center. This is where I was talking about Dark Swarm, very, very powerful. That's why usually you want the science vessels and uh, radiates, and just even this grouping of siege shanks. If there's a Zergling next to it, the splash would have hit, but once it's burrowed, not going to happen. A bunch of vultures making their way top right to go ahead and cap that. I also want to note there's a whole lot of vision for Radley on the map. In fact, if I if you knock this down, you can see how much of the map he has visible to him compared to Jiraiya. Although it looks like this army is able to peek through the edge. Jiraiya pressing forward. He's got an Ultralisk amongst this. And it looks like he is going to be able to land Dark Swarm. One of the weaknesses of Siege Check late game is exactly this is it's slow so if you can get dark swarm and some zerglings and some ultralis on top of it it'll obliterate the army in place so radley losing that mid space army he's got some siege tanks out to the corner but honestly none of this is insurmountable from jariah the ultralisks need to back away from those spider mines this is this can be the vultures ironically can be the counter to ultralisk here late game with this exactly you can see how much uh, chunk they take out, and that's extremely cost-efficient for Radley. But now we got some queens making their way out to the 9 o'clock position, potentially to drop some broodlings on the siege tanks here. That might open up things to take down a base. I don't see a zergling follow-up or any additional follow-up. Instead, they're working on the missile turrets. It's just going to be a bit of a distraction. But we have the ultralist count starting to grow. All of a sudden, Jiraiya at double the supply of Radley, despite being on uh, four bases versus four. Technically, that's a... Terran being even situation. The mine still... Well, it looks like they're getting cleared up. Now we have a little bit of a delay follow-up of Ultralis moving into the 9 o'clock base. Going to be able to clear a lot of these troops. Some lurkers have managed to sneak here bottom left, and it looks like a drone going to go ahead and re-grab that situation. The command center going to get wiped out. And now, all of a sudden, Radley's in some trouble because Radley has the very expensive mech army. Level 2 weapons, however, and level 2 armor have completed. It looks like some Zerglings are starting to get on top of these siege tanks midfield. Radley needs to be very careful about that. But his main 
is just about mined out. His natural expansion still has some minerals, but he's got two bases. And it looks like he's just now moving to go ahead and grab a third. And Jiraiya has dropped the natural at top right. And do we have the... I don't see the drone bottom left. I thought I saw a drone make its way that direction, but it looks like it never... It never completed the, the, the plop down. Meantime, we have a dropship. I think I missed a drop here at the natural expansion, clearing a lot of drones there. It looks like a single vulture. I'm gonna go ahead. How many kills does it have? Can I get a look at it? It looks like it has three kills. Ultralisk not able to get behind its own building right this second. The Zergling's having trouble as well, so it's gonna take some Hydralis to evict that location. In the meantime, that hatchery killed top right, which is just about what would be expected there. Looks like finally some Scourge able to wipe some... I'm not sure how they took out the, the Vulture in the midst of that, but it looks like that's finally been cleaned up. Jiraiya starting to reposition his attack force, wanting to halt top right. He's bringing in a lot of his army piecemeal, also without Defiler support, which is allowing these Siege Tanks with their heavy upgrades to do a lot of damage to these Ultralists, despite that, fi that plus five armor. Siege tanks keep minor explosive. The queen's, however, going to move up. And at the very least, what this could do is this could deny that top right base to Radley. And in a starvation match overall, Drya potentially, yeah, in a better situation. Radley recognizing he wasn't going to be able to hold top right. Was there a drop at the 12 o'clock? There was a drop at the 12 o'clock. The Zerglings made it to the 12 o'clock as well. Oops. Missed my mic right there. So Drya able to take game one in a wild one back and forth. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.